Hello and welcome to a new video on the Heisenberg Group and Exponential Lambert Series. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. Uh, first things first, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And now on to the video. Here we state what the Exponential Lambert Series is. It is the exponential generating function of the Lambert Series. Uh, you have some b sub m divided by m factorial. You have some a sub n, and a sub n and b sub m are connected by the Mobius inversion formula and both arithmetic functions. Here we have the Mittag-Leffler function. And so we say that the exponential Lambert series is an element of the exponential generating function class. Now, if you know anything about the exponential generating functions, you know there's a whole bunch of associations with uh, Lie algebras. So that's kind of more or less what we're gonna go for. Okay, so it is convenient for us uh, to take this new kind of representation and add a one. So one plus all of this, right? And in many ways, uh, this could even be thought of as uh, b sub zero. Here, b sub zero is just set equal to one. Now, in the exponential generating function world, we have a whole bunch of cool identities that we can exploit. Say, for example, you have an EGF here and an EGF here, and you multiply them together. You actually get a very smooth and uh, clean representation of a new exponential generating function. For c sub n, you have uh, this relationship right here. And these are the binomial coefficients, okay? Now, uh, when we'd like to show there's a relationship with the Heisenberg uh, group, um, we would obviously like to show some type of Lie algebra uh, relationship first, okay? So I'm gonna uh, use um, these generators right here. And uh, this is for Heisenberg, uh, I think group three, if I remember correctly. And I'm just going to demonstrate really, really quickly. I'm not going to give the grand formalism just yet, but how, how and why we have this intuition around the exponential Lambert series and the Heisenberg group, okay? Now, if you've watched my videos a lot, you know the exponential Lambert series has a lot to do with analytic number theory. Uh, sometimes you plug in e to the two pi i uh, tau. We do all sorts of cool things with it, but instead of plugging in a function like x or e to the something, we're going to plug in matrices. Okay? And we are going to particularly look at uh, this uh, matrix. Uh, x1, and you have what? 0xz, uh, 0, 0, 0y, I mean you can read it. So x squared is going to be, or you square this matrix, is just going to have a zx. Okay? And anything higher than uh, n greater uh, than equal to 3 is going to be 0. So it's going to annihilate a whole bunch of stuff. Now we can immediately plug our matrices in uh, to our S's here and use this relationship. And we see, of course, this nice relationship. Now this is a lot, a lot to write um, and then say, so I'm not going to say all of this, but clearly if this relationship is satisfied, if you have uh, some B sub M that satisfies this relationship, of course you absolutely have uh, something that satisfies uh, the uh, criteria for being in the Heisenberg group. Now I'm going to flip uh, the board. We're going to see actually how we can actually even use uh, the a sub n representation to make this even much more of a smooth process. So let's flip the board. All right, there we go. So we can further uh, state uh, this kind of a little bit more cleanly. If we have uh, this relationship for b sub m, uh, clearly it is in the Heisenberg group. And for b sub uh, 0 equal to 1, uh, we absolutely have uh, this kind of nice uh, little bit of a recurrence property, right? Okay, so that's like a really, really formal way of doing it. Uh, what we'd also like to show um, is that we can do it just by expanding uh, with, um, you know, the regular series. Okay, so here I've taken the b sub m series and I've just plugged in um, b sub 0, b sub 1, uh, b sub 2 divided by 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, and plugged in all the matrices, okay? And uh, so this is obviously the first, sorry, 0, uh, the first and the second, and if you can show that this relationship holds, uh, you're in a really good place. Now, of course, you may not have a really good way of, you know, knowing what this is. Like, you have this representation, but how do you get the recurrence property uh, just from these expanses? Well, in walks in our mid tog left function representation, right? So uh, to clearly state this, um, if b sub zero equals one, 
that makes a sub zero also equal to one via the Mobius inversion formula and identity criteria. So we can say sum n equals uh, zero to infinity, a sub n for uh, a sub zero equals one. And we can more or less kind of, uh, you, know, you know, deal with this, right? Um, it might be divergent in some areas, might not be totally well behaved, but once we plug in our matrix representation, as you can see, all of this other higher level nonsense kind of goes away. Um, so if you have what, a sub zero, identity matrix plus, and then this is just the Mittag Leffler function stuff that survives, right? Clearly, um, not all of this survives. You know, when uh, you have d equals one to two, obviously the four, the, you know, would not survive. Um, but this is pretty, uh, pretty much of a simplified version of everything. So what you would do is you would set this equal to this, and show that relationship. I think that's a lot easier, my personal opinion, um, you know, because obviously if these are ones, uh, all ones, then this cancels out, this cancels out, and all you have to do is show this equals uh, this, you know, for some Mobius inversion formula, okay? And this, I think, is, you know, a lot more simple, a lot more simple. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.